Hey guys, welcome to another Amaros Talks Tech. AMD recently released their new Ryzen 7 CPU series. It's been highly anticipated as AMD's return to the top of the CPU performance charts. They haven't been that way for six years since Bulldozer came out, and so we have high expectations on the new CPUs. To see how well they are doing, let's go ahead and jump straight into some numbers here so we can actually discuss some of what's going on. We'll start with Cinebench to see how well Ryzen matches up to AMD's official numbers pre-release. Starting over at Tom's Hardware, we have the Ryzen 1800X actually coming out at 1597, which is pretty close to the 1601 that the official numbers show. Now when we look at their single thread performance, it's actually down at 132, which is significantly shy of the 162 that they said on their official numbers. If we jump over to legit reviews though, we can see that their 1800X CPU comes out at 1635, which is just above what the official numbers show. If we look at the single thread, it's 163, which is practically right on the nose. If we look at the other CPUs, the 1700X coming out at 1551, which is very close to the 1537 from the official numbers, and the 1700 coming out at 1411, which is almost on the nose of the 1410 that we show in the official numbers. When we look at the numbers for the 7700K, we can see that legit also has a 996, which is right next to that 967, but slightly higher, whereas Tom's was showing a 976. But the guys over at Hardware Canucks and over at Overclockers Club both agree with AMD's official numbers. At Legit Reviews, we have the Dolphin emulator, and the 7700K is doing really well in this one against the Ryzen CPUs. And they're down here at about 30% behind. If we look at, as you saw, photo scan, you can see the 7700K overclocked and the normal one right here and the Ryzen just below that practically tying it right here and of course the 10 core right here at the top doing definitely better we keep going you can see key shot this one scales exceptionally well with cores definitely showing the multi-threaded capabilities here Ryzen's all the way up here at the top trailing just behind the 6900k and of course the 7700k even overclocked trails well behind the 1700 CPU. We look at Blender. This one also scales pretty well with a little bit of diminishing return once you hit that 10 core CPU. But the 1800X is right up here and the 7700K fallen behind right here. Probably about by the same amount that they lost up here in Dolphin. We go over to Overclockers Club to look at some additional Office and productivity apps. We have Office 2016 Excel Spreadsheet Test, where the Ryzen CPUs come out pretty well, just ahead of the 7700K. We scroll down, you can see POB Ray 3.7, which the Ryzen CPUs really get a chance to show their computational prowess. You can see the 10 core CPU here at the top, the eight core just behind that, 7700K all the way down here, a good 800 points behind. We have Pro Show Gold with the 1800X performing pretty admirably, but this one, it actually gets beaten out by the 7700K quite handedly. We keep going down, we got Handbrake. The Ryzen CPUs definitely perform very well in this well-threaded benchmark. We've seen how it performs in work-related tasks, but how does the Ryzen CPU perform in games? Over on Guru 3D, they've tested several games here. We got Hitman at 1080p. You can see it's pretty much in line there and at 1440. And we have Tomb Raider at 1080p. You can see it's expectedly in line here with our 7700K. And at 1440p, it comes back in line. Far Cry Primal is actually, once again, in line, 7700K, about 15 frames ahead, and then 
P, we have it right in line again. In Tom Clancy's The Division at 1440p, it's actually lagging behind, which is a little different than we've seen where it usually goes back in line, but at 1080p, it's actually still lagging about by the same amount even. Here's some extra games here. We got Deuce X. As you can see, at 1080p, it's still fallen behind slightly, but it evens out at 1440. Watch Dogs 2 is pretty even. Dishonored, slightly behind and evens out. Battlefield 1, pretty much the same. Resident Evil 7, the same. Over at Legit Reviews, with Thief, we have the CPUs lining up just as expected. The Ryzen CPUs trailing behind the 7700K. And we have that all the way at 1440 and even some in 4K. And Grand Theft Auto 5, it's also lagging behind the 7700K and Deuce X, Mankind Divided, also slightly behind, but not quite as bad. Now, the thing that they wanted to test here was the differences between 1080p, 1440p, and even 4K. As you can see, as we go up in resolution, we actually start to get more in line in the Ryzen CPUs don't fall quite so far behind, just kind of as Lisa Sue mentioned, that the Ryzen CPUs are primarily targeted toward 1440 and 4K. See, right here at 4K, they actually line up very well with the 7700K, just slightly behind, but pretty much in line. Here in Grand Theft Auto V, we have the scaling with the Ryzen CPUs right behind the 7700K, and Deuce X, it also starts to get right up in line here at 4K. Now the thing that you might notice here is that an i3 7350K has been injected into these results and that's only a two core four thread CPU. And you can see it's right in line with how Ryzen is performing at eight core 16 thread and even just slightly behind the four core eight thread 7700K. So these games really aren't even stressing the CPU to cause a four thread CPU to have any kind of trouble whatsoever. And so if you're looking for a CPU that you want to game on, even the i3-7350K for these three games is just fine. However, if you're in the market for a $500 CPU, you're probably gaming on something better than 1080p, or your video card is good enough that you won't notice the frame difference. So how well does Ryzen do on power consumption? At PC Perspective, their power consumption shows running at idle and running load under Cinebench. And we can see that the i7-7700K is actually consuming a little bit more power at idle, but a lot less power here when it's running this full load. And if we switch over to Hardware Connects, we can see we got something similar except for Ryzen is actually consuming more power on idle here and still significantly more power under load. Now in both cases, it's a lot less power than what the 6950 or 6900K is using. However, if we switch over to legit reviews, they have it broken down a little bit more. They show an ADS64 test, handbrake, and thief gaming. And we can see here that the 1800X is at 44.5 idling versus the 7700K at 38.9 idle. So even here, they're showing it's using just a little bit more. Idea 64, it shows 166 versus 138. We got 174 versus 154 in handbrake. But then while gaming, we have in Thief 273 versus 283. So you can see here that in a gaming scenario, the 7700K actually takes more power than the 1800X. It's almost like it's being better utilized or more utilized than the Ryzen CPU. And it's still a far cry from the huge power numbers of the 6900K and the 6950K. So we can see Ryzen does very well in most workstation and content creation tasks has power usage that's very comparable to Intel's mainstream CPUs, and they're more efficient than Intel's high-end desktop CPUs. However, Ryzen still falls short of Intel's Cabby Lake CPUs in gaming at 1080p and programs that are not well-threaded. So what's holding back Ryzen in these scenarios when it has demonstrated its huge potential in other programs? There's several things to consider. 
First and most obviously is the higher clock rate of the Cabby Lake 7700K CPU, which will make it perform phenomenally better in single-threaded tasks. But there's other things that seem to be holding Ryzen back currently. Thread scheduling can have a large impact on CPU performance. Over on kernel.org, there's a patch for the Linux kernel that states SMT scheduling is effectively broken for the FAM17H Ryzen CPUs. The kernel treats each thread as its own full core rather than two threads as a core with SMT that have shared cache resources. This apparently is the same problem Windows currently has. Here's a printout of the registered cores from Windows Sys internals. Each thread, as you can see, is registered with its own core, as denoted here with the stars, with its own L2 and L3 cache, which is different than what is registered for Intel CPUs, where each core with its associated hyperthread is registered together to share its cache. This is what the Linux kernel patch does, and what Windows still needs to fix. Now when Bulldozer was first released, it had modules that contained two cores each, and Microsoft had to issue a patch to fix thread scheduling for Bulldozer CPUs in order for them to perform better. And now we have to wait for that same type of patch from Microsoft once again to remedy this issue that we're currently facing with Ryzen CPUs. One of the most obvious troubles that reviewers saw was related to memory speeds and cache latency. Tom's Hardware ran into some inconsistencies between their results and the values that they were provided by AMD. Tom's reports, We measured performance with the utilities and achieved similar results for Intel's Core i7-6900K, but we also noticed a large gap between AMD-provided Ryzen measurements and our test results. Ryzen's L3 cache latency measured 20 to 23 nanoseconds, which is double the provided value. Many common utilities write zeros to the cache to measure performance. AMD responded to our inquiries and stated that Intel coalesces incoming zero write traffic before it passes it to the cache, which could yield artificially high cache throughput measurements, particularly because those patterns don't exist in real-world usage. In our opinion, changing the access pattern would result in reduced performance measurements for Intel processors. That impact is borne out by legit reviews tests showing full random taking a larger latency hit. Tom continues, AMD responded that the current utilities are also not optimized for Zen's unique architecture, and optimizing the utility's code pass will expose more performance. Which according to Ada64 on Twitter, AMD hadn't sent us Ryzen before launch. As soon as we can get one, we will fix the L2 and L3 benchmarks. So the values that we are seeing on reviews for cache latencies may not be entirely accurate, and once again demonstrates that the new architecture has software updates that need to be made to utilize it correctly. However, that's not the worst of it. Far more important is launch day memory support. If we look at the test setups of various reviews, we clearly see a wide range of test RAM frequencies. Tom's hardware tested Ryzen with Intel 7700K, both at 2666 MHz, presumably to represent one of the more common frequencies used. Overclockers Club tested their Ryzen CPU at 3000 MHz, but their Intel 7700K at 3600 MHz, giving an advantage to their Intel CPU. Anantech tested theirs using 3000 MHz RAM, but downclocked it to 2400 MHz. Legit Reviews also downclocked their 4000 MHz RAM, but only down to 2933 MHz, stating we wanted to test with one of the most popular clock frequencies sold today. Besides different RAM frequencies, each used different motherboards as well. And Antec states that in the review samples that the tech press were given, it was a random allocation of motherboards. Some reviewers mentioned difficulties with stability using higher speed RAM. TechSpot stated, Unfortunately, I was only able to get my test set up stable with DDR4-2666 memory, and even that was a bit of a pain to achieve. The system was stable briefly using DDR4-3000. Guru3D states fairly concisely that higher frequencies are only supported with two DIMMs. If you use four DIMMs, then at this moment you're looking at a maximum of 2400 MHz. AMD actually outlined their stock RAM frequency support, outlining different speeds for dual and quad socket configurations, and even more out of the ordinary, breaking out dual and single rank DIMMs. 
Specifying speeds based on dual and single rank is common in server configurations, but not as much in mainstream desktops. That they do this gives even more credence to an observation by a review that AMD seems to have taken a server CPU and pared it down for the mainstream desktop. Since the Summit Ridge die is to be used for not only Ryzen, but also for Naples, AMD's next server CPU, that observation is essentially correct. Now, regarding the DIMM support, this is certainly a motherboard BIOS issue. Launch day has BIOS is barely out of beta, so expect updates to enable better stability and RAM support in the weeks to come. Golem.de has already seen what a BIOS update did for their review motherboard, correcting sporadic blue screens and providing better performance in programs like 7-Zip, but importantly, drastically higher performance in some games by 4 to 26 percent. With this in mind, early adopters should aggressively pursue BIOS and driver updates for the next little while. As a minor note, overclocking much over 4 GHz on Ryzen shouldn't be expected for an everyday overclock. By nature, large core count CPUs are notoriously harder to overclock than smaller core count CPUs like Intel's 7700K. What this means is there's very little headroom left in the 1800X. But quite frankly, Ryzen is already well in line with the performance of Intel CPUs that cost twice as much. So it still has a great value proposition. Today, AMD's Ryzen CPU really has its biggest win in price per performance. There's some phenomenal performance in workstation and content creation tasks, even if it currently trails behind Intel's higher frequency, lower core count CPUs in gaming. However, with CPU loads already maxing Intel's four core CPUs, they just aren't a good long-term choice for a high-end gaming rig in today's market. With a little time, the launch day BIOS problems will get fixed, and Microsoft may even issue a patch eventually to help correct the problems with thread scheduling. Even still, Ryzen is already an impressive CPU, and it's hard to deny it being a value leader bringing the fight back to Intel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.